What's up guys, how you doing? This is Philip Starrett again and welcome to today's video and today's video is actually going to be the first part in a Java series and that Java series is going to be in Project Lombok. So why am I creating this series? I'm creating this series because I use Lombok heavily, I really like it, it really eases my development and removes a lot of boilerplate from our code even right the way to production. So I want to show you guys um, how I like Lombok and some of the features I like in Lombok and how it can potentially make your life a lot easier and your code bases a lot cleaner. So what is Project Lombok? And this episode is going to be about installing Project Lombok for Eclipse or Spring Tool Suite. If you have IntelliJ, it's as simple as adding the Lombok plugin, installing and restarting. With, Intel with IntelliJ, it's easy. With Eclipse, STS and a few other IDs, it's a little bit more, uh, you have a little bit more to do, but very still very little. So what is Project Lombok? Project Lombok is a, is a Java library that automatically will plug into your editor. So that's what we're going to do. And it's going to automatically generate our Java bytecode for us based on a couple of annotations. So the likes of the features are, are this, these ones. We don't need to write getters and setters anymore. We can just write add getter setter. We have non null checks that we can automatically bring in. We can generate two string equals hash code. We can generate a builder, which is all actually going to remove a lot of boilerplate builder code that I had a previous tutorial with. So let's go ahead and get Lombok installed and then I'll get dive into the features. So the first thing you want to do if you're uh, working with Eclipse or Spring Tool Suite is actually bring in Lombok as a dependency. So I'm using version 1.16.18, major minor patch of course, and that's the latest version as of today. So that isn't enough with uh, Eclipse. And there's no actual plugin uh, uh, as of today, um, the 24th of September 2017, installed for that. So what you're going to need to do is actually locate to the, the local Maven repository where Lombok um, jar file lives. So once you've found that, so it's going to be in your M2 uh, local repository, open up it, open up the Lombok.jar, so just double click on it, and you'll see that it'll open up a new window. So here we'll see it's got a nice wee installer, it says it can't find any. So if it doesn't find any like this, like my computer, you're going to have to manually specify the location of the .exe file or if you're on Linux or you know, whatever, make sure you locate the actual executable file and place it in IDE. And then all you need to do is click install slash update. It'll instantly pick up the IDE, quit the installer, and then you need to restart your Eclipse or Spring Tool Suite. So once you've restarted that, you should now have access to uh, Lombok features and its bytecode ma manipulation. And one way to, to verify this is if you go to wherever your Eclipse is installed or at Spring Tool Suite and actually open up the sts.inl file, well then you'll see that we have a new argument at the bottom um, bringing in Lombok jar as a Java agent. So now we know it's definitely uh, modified our um, installation of our uh, Eclipse or IntelliJ, or not IntelliJ, uh, Spring Tool Suite. So now you can go ahead and uh, use Lombok in your IDE. So uh, this is the f end of first part of the Lombok series. In the next part, I'm going to be showing you how you can use getters and setters, data, and so on and so forth, and make immutable classes. So make sure you stay tuned for part two. Make sure you subscribe to these videos if you enjoyed them, and I'll see you in part two.